The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. The name Jesus. See, the name Jesus is one of the resurrections of the legacy of Christ. When they were singing about Jesus, I said, okay, I'll preach about his name. The name Jesus. Last week, I was sharing from 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. Then I want us to begin from 2 Timothy 2, verse 8. I'll take it from the New Living Translation. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. This is the from, from Apostle Paul to his son and pastor of the church of Ephesus, Timothy. He was a, quite a timid person. Paul encouraged him to come out of timidity and show some boldness. But that is why we have been called. And now he's telling him that he should always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. What is he trying to say? He's just trying to tell, let him know that the foundation of the ministry that he has chosen is the resurrection of Christ. It is the cause for effective ministry. The resurrection of Christ. It makes the difference between us and them. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference between Jesus and Muhammad. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference between Christ and any religious guru that you can name. I said last week that Jesus Christ is not a theory. When we come to church, it's not about sound and light. It's not about propositions and hypotheses. No. It is about the reality. Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This you must always remember. Because Christianity is a life-changing experience. It is not a theory. And today, I want to share with you one of the legacies of the resurrection. The name Jesus. The name Jesus. Paul is saying always remember, but you see, it is not important to keep dwelling on things that are not beneficial. So when he's saying that we should always remember, then I believe that if he knows that dwelling on the resurrection of Christ has benefits that we must keep in focus. Take your eyes off the resurrection of Christ and Christianity according to 1 Corinthians 15, is useless. Our preaching is in vain. If Christ was not raised from the dead, your coming here is useless. In fact, it will be a waste of time. But always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. In our quest to possess the nations as a church, we need to have a fresh understanding of the resurrection and the resurrection power. In fact, the benefit of the resurrection was for the church. He came to die. He suffered all that he suffered. Not to just take a name and pride himself that I have a name that is above everything. Because he is God. He is God. He is God. Ephesians chapter 1. This is the prayer the Apostle Paul prayed for the believers in Ephesus. Ephesians 1 from verse 17. 
I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. This is not the gift of wisdom and revelation. This is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that you may know him better. Let me just give you something here. When you sit by the word of God, pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will help you to know him better. That you will know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart, so as we sit here, we have eyes of the body. But Paul is saying that there is the eyes of the heart may be enlightened. That is where revelations are born. In the heart, in the spirit. So some of us can come to know God. But we have known him once. And our eyes were open to receive him. But that is not the end. It should keep opening. So that day in and day out we know him better. So that we can interpret him well to those who are outside there. That is why Peter said, you should always have an answer for those who ask you about your faith. One day Jesus Christ healed a blind man. And then he asked him, what do you see? Then the man said, I see men like trees. How can you live on the planet Earth and be seeing men like trees? If you give this man a cutlass, what will he do? He will cut human beings and kill them. So Jesus said, no. Look, but Jesus touched him once. And he touched him again. He said, what do you see? So I see men correctly. He said, now you can go. Today I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch your eyes again. It is not enough to be born again. There's so much to learn. And we need to explore. It is not enough to be baptized in the spirit and be speaking in tongues. When you give a microphone to someone in worship, tongues. In deliverance, tongues. Everything is tongues. No. May your eyes of understanding be open. It's not always tongues. Paul says, I'll speak with the tongues and I'll speak with my understanding. You must play left and right. I pray that God will open our eyes. It is not enough. See, when you even speak in tongues, it is a transition into power. Because Jesus said, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he didn't say you shall speak in tongues. So the tongues is the initial evidence, but the actual thing is power. So the tongues is just the beginning, but you must enter into the power zone and swim in the power of God and live in the power of God and be the power of God unto salvation for them who do not know him. Who do not know him. I pray that God will open our eyes this morning again. That your eyes of understanding be enlightened. That you may know the hope to which you have been called. This is the anchor. If you don't have hope and you don't know the hope to which you have been called. That one day he that is to come will come. When you have to add zeros, you add the zeros. When you have to falsify figures, you do it. May your eyes of understanding be enlightened. That one day when the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ will rise and we shall stand before him. And every one of us, each one of us, will give an account of what he did while he was in the body. Because by that time we had gone out of that body. But you give an account of whatever you did while you were in the body. We shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So know that one day... The trumpet will sound. A good and a purposeful life is lived with the end in view. You see, <laughs> you cannot live your life when you don't know tomorrow. It will never be purposeful. But have the end in view. Paul is saying here that I pray that your heart be made to be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you have been called. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Now, when you leave the world and you join us, the saints, 
There may be ways by which we are making money and gaining some wealth, if I should describe it that way. But when you come into Christ, you don't have to continue the same business old tactics and deceiving people. He says, stop it. May your eyes be enlightened now to know the glorious riches of inheritance that is in place for the new creation. So that the new creation is saying that don't do things the old way. There are still riches in Christ. But the method is not the same. Here we don't take what does not belong to us. We question envelopes when they are coming to us. We want to know the source. We don't want to just own cars. We want to own cars that we have earned the money to buy. And we are comfortable driving an old car. Sometimes the world think that we, 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 we are not rich. But they don't know what they are talking about. They never know what they are talking about. Riches is not just riding the best of the biggest car. No. It is these things that we, 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 we rush for. And then some have made shipwreck of their faith. Shall we rise and pray? That God, open my eyes of understanding. Let me know you better. To be able to set you apart as Lord. Shall we please be on our feet? Oh, Sunday. Holy Ghost, do it again. Shall we lift up our hands? Do it again. In my heart. In my heart. It is heart matter. It is about the heart. Open my heart to see Jesus. To see Jesus. Seated upon the throne. Open my eyes Open my eyes To see Jesus Seated upon the throne Open my eyes Open my eyes the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope for which you have been called the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people in Jesus name Amen shall we sit verse 19 of Ephesians 1 we are in verse 19 now and his incomparably great power now i see that the apostle paul here was was struggling to find an adjective to properly qualify the power because it is incomparably great incomparable is adjective great is adjective and so he is saying that greatly great power or incomparably incomparable power for us who believe 
not for apostles. For anyone who confesses Jesus as Lord, this power is available. That is why I don't want us to be talking about witches and wizards and spending quality time just talking about these things. Somebody will come and stand here, so by the time you go home, all the witches in your house, we bind them, we kill them, we slaughter them. You see, these things are for babies. Those who know this incomparably great power, such services do not excite them. They want something better. We are talking about principalities and powers, and you are talking about witches. We are talking about witches. Binding, losing. While people are forward sliding, you are backsliding. So we are talking about serious things. See, the church has to deal with serious issues, not these things. Anointing oil, selling water. If the name of Jesus cannot help you, will water help you? See, I want us to come out of these things. That is the weakness of the church of our day. Yeah. I pray that our eyes of understanding be enlightened, that we will know the hope that is in Christ. And his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is for us. That is why Peter said, what I have, I give in the name, because the power is for him. So Peter said, I have it, and I'm going to give it to you for us who believe. The power is like the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above principalities and powers. Dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Now verse 22. And God placed all things under his feet. This is a picture of what used to happen in the ancient times when a king defeated the foe. See, like David, he will lift his leg like that and stand on the neck of Goliath. When he stood on the neck of Goliath, everyone in Israel knew that Goliath was dead. And then when he cut the head and he lifted it like that, the enemy is effectively under his feet. And God placed all these things under his Christ's feet. Now listen, this is Christ's feet. Hold that one. Let's go to Ephesians 2 verse 6 and then we'll come and continue. So we are at his feet. Under his feet, Christ's feet. Now listen, this one says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We just read that God lifted him up far above principalities and powers. And where he is seated, he placed all this under his feet. And the Bible says, and God raised us up with Christ. So where are we also seated? Seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ. And if the principalities and powers are under his feet, they cannot be on our laps. They are under our feet as well. This is the Bible. Don't let people come and disturb us with riches. Don't go and call somebody who says, I'm a champion something. And then when I stamp on the floor, demons will move. Don't mind him. We all have that. It is available to all of us. It is under our feet. Under his feet and under our feet. Hmm. And God placed all things under his feet. And I appointed him to be the head over everything for the church. For who? The church. He did all this for the benefit of the church. So everything, every victory that he won, the nuggets that are in is for us. Paul says that I pray that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. 
And I'm also praying for the fresh understanding of the resurrection power and what the benefit that it has for us. One of the benefits of the resurrection that is available for us is the preaching in the name Jesus. Luke chapter 24. I start from verse 44. Luke 24 from 44. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Now, this is to the disciples on the way to Emmaus. They were so confused because they thought that somebody had taken the body away. And while they were discussing, Jesus joined them. And this is some of the things Jesus told them. Then he opened their eyes. These, are, these were eyes of disciples. And I pray that you also be enlightened once more. So they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. So if it is a third day, it is a fourth day, then remember that the Messiah is risen because of what has been written. And then 47 is a big one. After the resurrection, this is what is going to follow. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. So, the legacy that is going to flow out of the resurrection, the first one is the preaching in the name Jesus. The second one is you are witnesses of this. The second one is the witness of the believer. Then the third one is, I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The promised Holy Spirit. But today I will deal with the first one, the name Jesus. In fact, when he actually rose, he told the disciples, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus has spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God where the powers were going to be placed under his feet. Not at his feet, but under it. We come to church and we sit at his feet. But for them, they are under his feet. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word with signs and wonders. Hallelujah. So, the legacy, one of the legacies of the resurrection is the name Jesus. Psalm 9 verse 10 says this. Psalm 9 verse 10. This is a very important verse. And I want us to read together if we can. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name, not those who sing about your name, not those who pray and end with a phrase in the name of Jesus. He said, those who know your name. And the name of the Lord is not Jehovah. It is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The name of the Lord that was given according to Peter amongst men is Jesus. And those who know this name, not those who have heard or sing or pray in the name, but those who know what it means, what, what the name carries, they will put their trust in him. <laughs> Apostle Nanaya has been saying that, I think there was an issue whether on a bus or something. And people were saying, Jesus, Jesus. And there was this Nigerian preacher, I said, no, 
One Jesus is enough. <laughs> There's no need to be saying, Jesus, Jesus. Even now, women, when they see cockroach, Jesus. I mean, see, when you know the worth of the name, you will really not mention the name of the Lord in vain. Because one Jesus is enough. <laughs> one Jesus is enough. Those who know your name, they will put their trust in you. Are we together? In Acts chapter 3, something happened. Jesus had intentionally left this cripple for Peter. Then after the resurrection, while they were going to church, to the synagogue, then Peter said, this man asks for arms. Give me something, please. You know, I'm crippled. I'm a lame person. I cannot walk. Then Peter said, Silver 